Terry, certainly you have a, a ton of confidence in who you're giving the ball to tomorrow, but how would you describe the challenge of facing Madison Bumgarner in an elimination game? Well, he's, you know, he's outstanding, but this time of year you're going to face great pitching. We know that. Um, we're up for it. We faced, uh, you know, arguably the best pitcher in baseball last year in, in our in the series against the Dodgers. So uh, we handled ourselves pretty good, and we think tomorrow night we'll do the same. What's the best approach against Bumgarner? What's the most successful way to attack him? Well, he's real good, but like all, like all great pitchers, he throws strikes. And so the one thing you've got to go up is with a, a little bit of a plan. Uh, try to get something that you can handle, and don't miss it. Don't foul it off. Put it in play. Um, if you can do that, you know, he's, he's the kind of a guy. You guys have been around him a lot to know that he's an extremely aggressive. He's extremely competitive. He doesn't, he doesn't pitch around to anybody. He goes after everybody he ever faces. And therefore, you better, you better be ready because you're going to get something to hit, and you better, better do some damage with it. Okay, and here in the front to the right. Terry, do you have a lineup for tomorrow night? And if you're going to reveal it, what went into the first base? Uh, I decision? do have a lineup for tomorrow night, and I'm not going to reveal it. What, is, is first base uh, one thing you're still debating, though? No. Oh. Over to the left front. I think you alluded to this the other day, but why is Noah Syndergaard the right guy to start the game tomorrow? Well, we had to get in, and he was the guy to pitch Sunday. If it would have been Bartolo Colon on Sunday, he would have pitched. If it would have been Zach Lugo, who had to, was going to pitch Sunday, well, he would, or Seth Lugo, he would, have, he would have pitched. It was just lined up that uh, when, we, when we put it down at the end of the year, we knew the importance of getting in postseason was the first and foremost thing. Uh, and we, so when we set it up, we knew Noah would pitch the last game. If we ha had to go to an extra game, he was the guy. We didn't, but we didn't shuffle our lineup around or our rotation around, we, which we, again, as I told you guys the other day, you know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to try to play games. We didn't want to be cute, bringing guys back on short rest, or we just kind of lined it up that way. Um, no, like I, I've told uh, some people today, you know, last year Noah Syndergaard pitched I think one of the biggest games in our, certainly all year long, that's game three, but set up by the, the outing in Los Angeles. We took a 22-year-old kid and said, look, you got to go get maybe the biggest out of the year in, in the bottom of the seventh inning or eighth inning against the Los Angeles, seventh inning against the Dodgers, and he did that. Um, we think he's certainly got the mental makeup along with the physical stuff to be that guy. And just to the right. Terry, this season, your motivation of this team, going back to when you guys were two games under 500 to where they are now, how do you use that game when you clinched, overcoming all that adversity, and channel that for a one game tomorrow? Well, we've got, in my opinion, uh, an outstanding clubhouse full of guys who uh, want to win. They talk about... Uh, repeating going to the World Series and that and goes I remember uh, the first day of spring training when Joanna Cespedes walked to my office the first day when he reported you know I hadn't been able to talk to him after we had since we had signed him and he walked in and he said are you ready to go back to the World Series and I said you know that you're here yes we are and so it started there they want to win they it, it, they never got down um, you know once in a while, the manager has something to say, but it's pretty much the guys in that clubhouse that um, deal with each other on a daily basis, your peers that step up and have the right things to say a lot, uh, never letting guys have, have a bad day get down. And so uh, we've been very fortunate that we have got a group of guys that have great leadership ability in our clubhouse, um, and yet at the same time, tremendous competitive makeup along with talent. So we got to where we needed to get to. And just to the front left, Bruce. Terry, do you manage this game like it's game seven of the World Series? Is it all hands on deck? Anything goes? Well, you have obviously there's roster differences we'll make, but um, yeah, I mean, you'll certainly we, you're limited to some guys, but you know, we've we, this is a, a in one game, you got to pull out any, every every move you can possibly make to try to pull it off. So, uh, you know, we've added. We don't, we don't have all the pitching. You know, we certainly don't need a lot of pitching that you normally have a 12-man staff. We're probably going to be at nine. Um, give you some options off the bench, pinch running, move, some maneuvers you might want to make during the game. But, yeah, we'll, uh, you know, but again, 
you know, these two guys going tomorrow, I would think sitting here today, they're going to get pretty deep into a game. Yeah, they're both pretty good. So, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, execution when it comes to the, in a game like this. But certainly deep in the game, we'll make whatever move we think is essential to try to score.